Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. Uh, so today we're in a light, slightly different location. Uh, we're in part of the uh, Trackside 3D uh, 3D printing lab um, that is next door uh, to the Double O Rail layout. And so we've got quite a few uh, 3D printers in here. This particular one here is a Ender 5. Um, now it's just a standard Ender 5 and it has a magnetic print bed and basically I think it's uh, 220 by 220 by 220. I can uh, get so many 3D printers at this point. I don't always remember what off by heart. And uh, this one looks like it's it looks like 240, but its print area is about 230. So it's about 230 by 230 by 230. So um, this particular printer is a um, FDM printer. So it basically takes a roll of um, Kind of uh, plastic that's uh, got a 1.75 um, millimeter diameter, puts it through a filament feeder into the uh, hot end up here, and then it basically melts it out and draws with it. Um, you get some really high quality prints with it. Uh, for example, uh, this is a, a container wagon, or sorry, a yeah, 40 foot container, and you can see uh, not only does have we managed to print uh, the lines on it, but we also have uh, the bolt pattern details and then. The detailing underneath as well so if as long as you uh, design the thing appropriately for the printing technology um, you can produce some really 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 good results so in today's video what I wanted to do was show you how easy it was uh, to take a 3d design and uh, scale it up or down for different scales so there's a little bit of math involved and so what I've done is um, I've put together a kind of a cheat sheet and uh, so I have put that in an article uh, which I'll now link up here. Uh, so if you click on that, there'll be a little bit more information about uh, this type of 3D printing and uh, printing within different scales and so on. But the idea is that maybe there's a file you like on Thingiverse or uh, you go to a, a commercial site like Trackside 3D and you buy a, a design that might be in double O scale but you really need it in O scale or HO scale. Um, well, you can use the sizing software, um, something like Cura or Prusa Slicer and you can basically just scale it up or down um, with the correct percentage to the scale that you're using. So all of the trackside 3D designs that I do um, here at Double O Rail, they're all in double O scale, which is one to 76.2. And so if you want to scale those up or down, um, you can scale them up to O scale, G scale, you scale them down to HO scale and N scale. Um, some of them won't scale down very well to N scale just because um, they're designed specifically for FDM printers, and so you may hit some limitations on N scale where you know bold patterns or very small fine details, and uh, the nozzle that you have um, won't quite print those out out of the box. And so, in a later video, we'll explain how you can make some modifications to your printer uh, to maybe print some of those details. Um, most of our designs, we try to make them as detailed as possible. Um, so they will scale up to O scale, for example, and should print pretty well there. Um, we also do um, support. That's one of the nice things about um, selling the, the 3D files as a digital product. Um, so if you find that um, you have something in O scale and it does something not quite right or it needs a little bit of a tweak, uh, you can open up a uh, support ticket um, through our website and basically request that we make a change. And we'll go in, take a look at it. And if it's a change that needs to be made, we'll go ahead and, and fix it. If it's a problem maybe with your printer, uh, we'll try to help you out with that as well. So uh, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically uh, take the SD card that we've pulled out of the printer. I'm going to take it over to the computer and use uh, Cura uh, 440, which is the latest version of the Cura slicer. And I'm going to show you how to scale uh, one of our trackside 3D images up and down. Now you don't necessarily need to use one of our trackside 3D images. If you get something off Thingiverse or a friend gives you something or you design something yourself and you want to print it out in a different scale, you don't have to go and redesign it. You can basically just scale it up and down in the slicer very, very easily. And so once again, I said all the um, calculations were in that article. So you click on it. There's a downloadable cheat sheet as well that will hopefully help you out. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and uh, load up the stuff onto this SD card, uh, show you some stuff on the computer, and then we'll come back and we'll get the thing printed. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is a multiply the model that's been loaded into uh, Cura here. So we're going to click on multiply model, and then we're going to change the number of copies that we want. Uh, I think we're going to do um, three copies. 
and that will give us the ability to create um, four uh, models. So we got four equally sized double O scale models of our uh, 50 mile an hour speed restriction. Uh, so we take the first one and we're going to move it over to the left by uh, clicking on it and then dragging the right arrow um, off to the left. And then we're going to click on the green arrow and drag it down so it's level and off to the left of the other three. Once this is done, we can then rescale it. So the first thing we do is click on the scale. And you can see here it's got X, Y, and Z. And then you have the ability to uh, click uniform scaling or non-uniform scaling. Um, if you turn non-uniform scaling or if you turn uniform scaling off, and uh, you can control each of the X, Y, and Z axis independently. Um, however, we're going to turn it on, and then we're going to uh, plug in the end scale value, and then scale it down, as you see here. Next, we're moving on to the next uh, speed restriction sign, and we're going to scale this down to HO scale. Uh, so we plug the value in, and it's changed. Um, I've moved the double O scale one over, and then off to the right. Um, we basically are going to scale up the O gauge one. Uh, we don't change the double O scale one because it's already scaled at 100%. Uh, next, we're going to go save this to a file. So we click Save File after it's been sliced. And once we're ready to save it to a file, we're going to click the Save File button and then it'll allow us to store it to a directory. Um, here you can see that I saved the export the file to a queue directory with a date and I've put scale test at the start of the file name so that it's easier for me to pull up on the 3D printer. Next I'm going to copy this over to the SD card and that's pretty simple. I simply drag and drop and now it's over on the SD card. Now what we're going to do is eject the SD card and take it over to the 3D printer. All right, so we're back over here at the uh, Ender 5 uh, 3D printer. Now this uh, printer is a Chinese uh, design printer. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. They're, this particular one is about uh, $250. I think it's around 250 to 300 um, pounds in the UK. Uh, if you want to get this printer, um, we do have a link in our uh, store, so I'll uh, put a link here and you can get it off of uh, Amazon through us or you can go get it from Gearbest or one of the other um, vendors as well. Obviously if you buy it through um, our Amazon store we get a little bit of a kickback and you know, if we introduce it to you maybe uh, you can help us out that way to help us pay for some filament or something. We're not making a lot of money off of it. Um, so this particular printer does take a little while to assemble. It took me about 45 minutes to an hour to assemble it. It's relatively easy. If you look down here, you can actually see the instructions are printed on it. it has um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about, about eight major parts and they all clip together. Basically, you, you put the base with these um, frames in place and then you, you put the top piece in, in play and um, you put the, the back piece in there with the bed in play as well and add the computer component to the side here. And then that's basically it. You kind of tighten up the screws and you plug the wires in and you're good to go. So, you know, take your time with it. Like I said, it's going to take you about 45 minutes to an hour. And this printer is actually phenomenal. It, it's printed accurately since I put it together and it hasn't given me a single problem yet. So I'm uh, quite pleased with it. Now, this type of printer is uh, slightly different from the i3 printers that you normally see, FDMs. So you might have normally seen like the... Um, Z axis, which is this bed up here, um, it doesn't normally move up and down. It actually usually moves across the Y axis back and forth, and it's the print head uh, that moves up and down with the extruder on it. So this is slightly different in that the extruder only moves uh, X and Y, and then the bed itself is what moves up and down on the Z axis. Now. This is a sort of core XY printer. Um, what me, reason it's not a true core XY printer is because um, the printhead here can't move the X and the Y direction at the same time. It can only move an X and then Y. It can't move them both at the same time. So it's not quite a true core XY, but it is sort of a kind of a close to it. Uh, would be the best way to put it. And the other type that I said. Um, like this one over here, uh, it's an i3 style printer, so you have um, the head moves across the x axis and the z axis, and then the bed moves back and forth um, on the on the y axis. So what we're going to do today is we're going to fire this thing up. Um, it's got some blue PLA in it uh, from Hatchbox. Hatchbox is a really good product, 
Um, you can see a really nice kind of deep blue color. Now I normally print in different colors depending on the material I'm printing, um, unless it's for a very specific project, because I typically will um, paint these with a um, primer and then paint it with whatever rail match acrylic or enamel paint that I want to use. Um, so for testing purposes, I typically use uh, gray for PLA. I typically use um, kind of a whitish color like this uh, for PETG, which is a similar material. And uh, now all these plastics are uh, what I call bioplastics. And I'll do another video on materials here in a little bit and upload it. So anyway, so what I'm going to do today is um, I'm going to go and uh, turn this thing on, uh, show you how to put the, the SD card into it, and then we're just going to let it print on a time lapse, and you'll be able to see um, basically the thing print. Now it's going to take about 38 minutes to print. I'm not going to do it in real time. Like I said, I'll do it in a time lapse. We'll add some music, and you can watch the thing. And or if you want, you can just skip to the end where you can see the results. What I really want to do though is just show you that you can get really good results, and basically use 3D image files. Um, for any kind of scale. So just because you're in maybe a, a HO scale modeler and you see something that's in O scale or N scale and you really, really like it, but you don't have the image file, you can still download it and use it. Uh, likewise, if you've got a lot of stuff like maybe point machines or uh, trunking like the, that we have for trackside 3D and you need that in O scale, um, well, our products are dynamically correct. So you should be able to scale it up to O scale without any problems. Um, so what we're going to do today, uh, like you saw on the clip there, um, we're going to do a speed restriction sign. And so hopefully it'll uh, print out pretty well for us. Um, so here we've got the SD cards. The first thing we do is uh, put it into the SD slot. Now you can hot swap it. Um, but right around. <laughs> you can hot swap it uh, with it on, uh, but since it's already off, I'm just going to put it in so it saves us some time. Um, now what I'm going to do is before I turn it on, I'm like, well, it switches here. I'm going to turn it on, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go move the camera a little closer. So this here is the screen, and this is basically how you control it. Uh, you can see here this is the bed temperature. So it's currently it's at zero, it's set to twenty, um, and here or actually it's at twenty degrees and set to zero. Here it's at nineteen degrees and set to zero. This is the extruder temperature, and you can see it's got X, Y, and Z coordinates as well as it's got an SD card in and we're at 100% scaling and so on. Now you could do some of the scaling on here as well, um, but we're not gonna try that. It's a lot easier to do it in Cura. So what you do is you basically just push down on the knob here and go to print from SD. Now if I had swapped the card out while it was turned on, I would have hit change from SD first. But since it's uh, already in there, I'm just gonna do print from SD. Now I'm gonna go to my directory here, which is trackside 3D, and in here is my file. Now you saw earlier in the in the clip that I had added scale test in front of the file name. Now I do this because it actually truncates the file name. So if you've got a really long file name where you've got multiple versions of the same one, it makes it hard to see. Now the reason I do this instead of replacing the file name is because I want to know that it's still for the unit I have, which is the Creality Ender 5, and I still want the product code in there so I know what I actually printed. So you go ahead and hit that. And what it's going to do is it's first going to heat the bed. So you can see here, it's um, set the bed temperature for 50 degrees. And that's the current temperature the bed's actually at. So once this gets up to 50 degrees, it will then turn on the um, extruder temperature. And this will then climb up to the extruder temperature. When these are basically at their match level, so when this is at 50, and when this is at, um, at uh, I think 215 is what I set it to, uh, it will then start to print. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the other mount and actually mount the camera on the printer so that you can see what's going on. All right, so I've got the camera uh, mounted up here at the top. So this XY bar is going to go back as far as about here so it shouldn't uh, interfere with the mount. Um, basically, uh, it's a very simple setup. Uh, you're going to have the... Um, Filament is going to unwind uh, through this filament feeder. It's going to go down this tube here. You can probably see um, the blue filament inside the tube here. This is called a Bowden tube. And basically, this filament feeder is, pushes it into the extruder. The extruder is at a temperature where the plastic melts. And it basically flows through to the nozzle, and then it can draw with it. Um, now, this somewhat uh, dirty um, 
a bad thing here is a magnetic bed. Um, I'm pretty bad about cleaning it up, but um, basically you can go in and as soon as this thing is done printing, I can pop this off, bend it, and the prints pop right off. It's usually a good idea to let it cool down for a little bit and um, before you try to pop them off, because sometimes you can, um, they won't come quite off as cleanly as they should. Um, but usually I've got lots of projects going on, so I'm a little impatient. And so that's why there's some residue here. I could probably scratch this off. Uh, some of it's kind of stained into the bed. Some of it's just kind of uh, in there anyway. All right, so we're gonna go let this print. I'm gonna go uh, set the time lapse. It's at about 176 degrees right now. And so that's the temperature of the nozzle. The bed here is about 50 degrees and uh, we're gonna let it roll. So I'm gonna switch it over to time lapse and uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so what we've got going on here is you've got an O scale uh, 50 mile an hour uh, speed restriction sign, a double O scale 50 mile an hour speed restriction sign, a H O scale 50 mile an hour speed restriction sign, 
And we even managed to successfully print the N gauge one um, at two millimeter. So you can see here that it, you know, just a single file has managed to produce things for various different scales. So if I need something at O scale, um, you know, traditionally, if the manufacturer didn't make it, then I wasn't getting it right. Um, however, now, if there's a digital file that's in N scale or in H O scale or in double O scale, um, you know, of something that I need, and then I can convert that back and forth. So if I'm an O scale modeler, I can go and, and download the double O or the H O or the N scale model, scale it up in Cura or in Prusa Slicer and print it out. Um, and likewise, you know, this opens up a, a ton of possibilities. So if you're like maybe one of these modelers are in a scale like O scale or even N scale to a certain degree where you can't always get models or a new train comes out or a new uh, piece of freight comes out and it's just not available for your scale. Well, if that stuff becomes 3D printable, you'll be able to print it out for all scales. It won't really matter if it's N scale or O scale or O scale. Um, it kind of levels the playing field for a lot of modelers. Uh, so you don't have to you know, be stuck with a particular model uh, scale because the items you're looking for aren't available for it. So this is definitely a step in the right direction in terms of the future. So what I'm going to do next is just show you how to take these off the bed so you can take kind of a closer look at them all. So this is magnetic like I said so it just comes right off and it's printed for a little bit so it should be cooled and then all you do is just bend it slightly and it pops right off. So this here is the 50 mile an hour speed restriction sign in uh, in O scale, print it out real nice. Um, I'll set that aside. Uh, this is the one that's in double O scale. This is the one we normally use for a layout. Um, I wouldn't normally print this in blue PLA. I would print it in black um, or gray. But uh, since I had the blue PLA in this, and it's a lot easier to see it be printed, um, I thought I'd just go ahead and use it. Um, then again, we have the. Uh, HO scale, which is pretty close to, to O scale. You can see there's a little bit of artifact on that. Um, that'll come right off. It's just um, kind of excess plastic from uh, the extruder. I probably could have tweaked the Prusa or sorry the uh, Cura settings so that didn't happen. Um, I believe you can do uh, some retraction settings, um, and hopefully the N scale one will also come off. Yeah, and it does. And so you can see there. That's the end scale 50 mile an hour sign. Again, this stuff here is just, um, it's, you know, it pulls right off. Um, I usually use a pen knife or a X-Acto knife um, just to, you know, take it off um, cleanly. Um, and I could fix this too. I mean, I just printed this out with my standard settings, um, but I could easily uh, tweak the settings so that it, that kind of retraction uh, doesn't happen. It's not even that bad, so. It's um, pretty slick. That's an N gauge, right? And that's all from the same digital file. All right, so I'm gonna go to the workbench where it's a little bit more light and just show you those models all side by side so you can see the different ones. Um, but hopefully this has maybe inspired you guys to uh, take a closer look at 3D printing. Um, we have another video coming up pretty soon, uh, probably later today, uh, that will explain different types of 3D printers that we have here and um, you know some recommendations if you want to get started which ones to buy all right so we're back over here at the workbench and i just wanted to go through this uh, one last time so you could see exactly how this worked so we have here the o scale the double o scale the h o scale and the n scale um, versions of our 50 mile an hour speed restriction sign so when we designed this we designed it in cad uh, for double o scale so it's all perfectly uh, set up uh, to be the correct dimensions at double O scale. So double O scale, it's at 100%. So our percentage values that are in that article, and I'll, once again, I'll, I'll link it above in a card, um, as well as in the description. But basically, um, you know, HO scale is 87.59% of double O scale. And so by setting the Cura settings to 87.59%, we've now reduced the same image file down to HO scale. Same with N scale. So um, here, uh, this M scale reverse version we're using is 50.13%, and it's produced this much smaller file, and in turn has produced a much smaller 
um, item that we've printed out, and that's an N scale. And then for UK O scale, um, it's typically 175.17% um, of double O scale. And so we plug in 175.17% as a scaling factor, and it produces a O scale um, speed restriction sign. And so it's really that simple. So if you go and you want to take something that's HO scale and convert it to double O scale, or if the file is originally designed in um, you know, N scale and you want to convert it to O scale, uh, you can just use the different conversion factors to convert it from one scale to another. Now we've put all the cheat sheets for that in that article and you'll be able to uh, download the cheat sheet, print it out, use it whatever you want to use it for. So hopefully this has given you a good idea of what you can do um, in terms of you know using a single digital file to print in O scale, N scale, HO scale, double O scale. So it really does level the playing field in terms of availability of items um, in different scales. All right, so in our next uh, 3D printing video, we're gonna show you the difference between a couple of different models, as well as our recommendation for a 3D printer if you're starting out uh, looking for a 3D printer specifically for railway modeling. And we'll also go through some of the uh, differences between FDM and SLA. Now there's lots and lots and lots of 3D printing videos out there done by very good 3D printing experts. And so what we'll do is in the next video, I'll also put a link. And so you can do your own research, uh, not just take my word for it, uh, but take a look at what some of the experts said about various different printers. And then you can make your own decision. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions at all about this, or you have any requests or just general information you're looking for, please feel free to put it in the comments below. I know that there's a lot of misinformation out there about 3D printing. Um, I've heard things like, you know, FDM is an old technology, it, it produces massive layers and, and all this kind of stuff. And you can see right here, you can't even see the layer lines and that stuff. Um, so, it, you know, that's really, really old mentality. Um, it's some really old information. And in some cases you have guys that are punters who, who really want to not to buy a 3D printer so that they can make the cost savings. Because keep in mind, when I print one of these, it goes by weight. So if I go and I take um, my scales, for example, turn the scales on here. Um, doesn't it, It's one gram for the O scale, right? So just to give you an idea, this cost me 2p to produce. Not even that, actually cost me two cents. But if I was in England, it would have cost me 2p in terms of cost of plastic. Yeah, sure, it might have cost a little bit more if you factor in electricity, but it's negligible. It took like... 38 minutes to print all four, and this probably would have taken it about 10 minutes. So you're looking at something that uses less electricity than your Xbox. So I mean, it's it's really not that expensive. All right, well, that's it for today. Again, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, I'm going to go uh, produce a couple of more 3D printing videos today. So keep an eye out on the channel, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. Until next time.